Well, this is the new job. Pretty much every one of these pine trees needs to go. Landowner already started removing some, and I think they burned up all the slash during the winter time, and they piled all the logs with the Kubota. So we've already chipped up about, ah, uh, I don't know, six times that amount. get this big girl fired up it says a banded 18 inch track chipper it is fully remote control so I can run this machine excavator and can go gonna fire up that little pony right there also have the 12 here but it's not running the mulcher head it's got the stump grinder on it i don't know if i'll put that in this video but every stump on this ground is in the ground or all the way gone gone
Haciendo is aiming for right there. With, which one is it? Yeah, right there with this tree. Back lean, set a rope on it. Somehow we got it up there 30 feet. I'm gonna pull on it with this. <laughs> it's however it got up there is a miracle. Yeah. Oh, you didn't move the stump grinder? You could have just put her on autopilot and let her drive. Okay, quad pod. Quad. It's got four. It's not a tripod, it's not a bipod. Yeah. They do make these remote control, we're just ooh, very expensive. So stuff like this, for one, it's too big for the chipper, but it's all mainly punky garbage. And even if it could fit in the chipper, it's difficult to uh, clear the chute out. I don't know if the time lapse showed it, but I had a smaller one, might have been the top of this actual log, but it uh, clogged the chute up to get, to get out and fix the thing, so we'll just set this over here for the mulcher, but let's see, good, put it right here, dropped another 500, probably after all, probably close to 700 gallons dropped out there that last round with garden hose feeding it. The guy's got some good, good pressure coming out that well house. But see Haas over there, he's running the prime, getting rid of all the little stumps because his whole job, um, even down here I guess, where he's thinning it out, there's just a bunch of little stumps like right here you can see. Like stuff like that, that'll just throw your tracks. And when I'm trying to run two machines at rubber track, come down the hill like this, um, I can feel it beforehand when I'm running the excavator if I'm, you know, binding up on the tracks, but since I'm trying to control the track chipper from in here, um, it just, whatever I can see, and sometimes you can't see the stump that's grabbing the track at the last, you know, six inches of the stump, or the track, and end up just throwing a track, and then that'll cost you, you know, I'd say you could probably get it back on there with half, in a half an hour with this other equipment here to lift it up and stuff. A little bit different than an excavator because the excavator can lift itself back up. I'll set these here.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the job is all knocked out. I didn't film too much of that one, surprisingly, but a couple of those time lapses, I thought they turned out pretty nice. But we had done, I think, three of those back to back. It's a three acre conversion, is uh, the technical term for what we're doing. You go three acres of forest land and you convert it into something else, which usually entails doing clear cut. That could be open it up for residential home, commercial property, parking lot, or in this case, it's going to become a farm. And the price of the actual timber, the logs when they're dropped and shipped to the mill, is at an all time low. It's like embarrassing. It's like it it covers the trucking and then just a little bit kickback to the homeowner but then turn around and the lumber prices at like home depot and the lumber yard are freaking through the roof it doesn't really make too much sense but in this case um, we had done several of these jobs back to back and as soon as the scale tickets and the check cleared from the sawmill for this particular job uh, they cut us off you know you need a timber license to sell the timber and you need to have a purchase order with the sawmill. We've got all that stuff, we do this all the time. And they always kind of tip a toe around threatening to cut us off for various reasons. Overstock, they got you know burnt logs and stuff like that coming in or they're just stocked up for winter and they don't need anything more. But this sawmill that we normally haul to, I think they can take in like 300 plus logging truck loads of logs a day. But it just happened to be a lucky business decision that we happened to do this job when we did and it worked out perfect because as soon as like i said we were done they cut us off um, and we got paid for it and everything and the price um that it just offsets it the days of at least in our area the days of the timber paying for the whole job and everything those are gone it eats a chunk of it in this case it wasn't quite half of what the total bill was but nevertheless, you know, if you get a 40% discount because the logs paid back so much on the total job as a homeowner, landowner, that's pretty nice, you know. You can't really get bummed about a 40% payback kind of a thing on it or a good discount, I guess. So, and you know, what this job, I think we we're on there uh, 9, 10 days, something like that. We cut all the trees down, ground all the stumps, chipped all the brush, hauled all the logs off, it's a complete clean slate except for a big pile of chips spread across the whole thing. Uh, but I think it's just so funny that as soon as we finish this big-ish kind of a logging job for us, for a residential area, the sawmill cut us off. <laughs> I was like, gosh dang it. But I got a couple other jobs filmed um, with cedar logs. These are ponderosa pines. And the pines, that's, unless we go to export, we can't go local anymore. But the cedar, they still have good prices and we still have mills to go with those. But cedar in this area, as we go up in the mountains, uh, we don't really have too much of that here. But anyway, end this video officially. Let me know what the cedar, let me know what the uh, sawmill situation is in your area. Cedar, pine, uh, fir, all that kind of stuff is what our typical is. We don't have too much hardwood. Most hardwood around here just gets turned into firewood. But we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good weekend. Later.